Hey, so I'm going to talk about ADHD and ADD. So, all right. So this is pretty exciting. Um, ADHD is, uh, the causes are honestly just biological, genetic, 40 to 60%. There's not much we know about the causes. Um, but we're going to, just to define it real quickly, ADHD is just simply difficulty completing tasks that are required. So, yeah. But it's very hard for me to understand just because I feel like I have a difficult time carrying out tasks. So, I don't know. Um, and it's not just a childhood disease. Make sure you know that. All right. So, what are the assessments we want to do for an ADHD child? So, observation behavior in um, the home and school setting, progression, uh, uh, setting progression, the pattern in school, sleep, eating, parents and teachers. Um, you want to look at the dopamine and norepinephrine deficits. Um, those could be signs of ADHD. A delay in brain maturations in areas of self-regulation. Um, you're thinking of frontal mo uh, motor cortex, so think about that. Um, adult screenings. Uh, there's adult screenings. There's children's sc uh, screenings. I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, family and birth history is always important to get a history. Um, growth and milestone developments, as we talked about. We're gonna ta uh, there's developmental milestones that um, we need to know as nurses. And social and environmental conditions. Um, be aware of their social environment conditions that can cause stress to uh, an individual. Um, so there is children's screenings. Uh, so it's uh van it's called vanderbilt um parents and teacher scales uh there's a connor's parent and teacher rating scales a swan's nolan scale child behavior checklist um so these are all child um screenings and then there's some adult screenings and there's a lot of names for them so there's one called the adult adhd self-report scale adult adhd clinic diagnostic scale brown attention deficit disorder symptom assessment scale for adults adhd rating scale i uh um uh Four. Uh, so those just know that there are assessments out there to help diagnose for ADHD or screen for them because screen and then they have to officially be diagnosed with the DM5. So screen for them first and then they can be um, go to the uh, you screen and then you diagnostic. So to be officially diagnosed um, types, you have to have at least six of the symptoms, um, 17 or older. Um, only five is needed for the DSM-5 for at least six months. So you have to have the symptoms occurring for at least six months. Um, there's three different types. Uh, so there's inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Um, so inattention, just your brain's not there. Think about that. Hyperactivity, you're physically doing stuff. And um, impulsivity, you just like do things without thinking is a way to put it. So there is the combined type. So impulsivity, um, I'm going to give a few examples. You can't wait your turn. You interrupt conversations. Hyperactivity is fidgeting like this, um, tapping. Uh, hands, feet, squirm, uh, you know, um, and see it runs about, climbs when not appropriate, unable to play quietly, unable to um, talk successfully, unable to wait his turn. So these are just signs of um, hyperactivity and impulsivity. Um, inattentive would be appears to be careless in schoolwork um, and activities at home, avoids or dislikes engaging in tasks, fails to give close attention to details, fails to listen when spoken directly to, um doesn't follow through on instruction has trouble organizing and is easily distracted and, and forgetful so these are just signs of uh adhd and it's also very important to see this in multiple areas of life not just one area so you want to see in home schoolwork friends and relatives and that that those are ways to be in good indicators of adhd um there would have to be a clear interference with all these three settings of school work um and school, social, and work functioning. Um, the symptoms must be present at age 4 to 18 years of age um, to be diagnosed, but obviously there's adult assessments out there, um, so they had to be present at, uh, when you were seven, uh, younger also as well. All right, so now we're going to talk about some interventions to think about and com uh, complications. Uh, I think I want to talk about complications real first for this. There is um, caregiver role strain. So remember that the caregivers need respite care. Um, respite care is just giving time for the, the caregiver to um, replenish their energy reserves. Um, there may be a low self-esteem in these um, ADHD patients because they may be ye being yelled at other teachers all the time. You never know. So you want to provide that, promote that self-esteem for that patient and impaired social reaction interactions. They may be impulsive, not creating that 
good peer relationships and their risk for injury because they're very hyperactive, let's say, so they may accidentally hurt themselves or impulsive and not thinking. Um, and there's a high, uh, high risk for potential abuse for stimulants, which we will talk about very soon about these, um, these few classifications of drugs that are used for ADHD symptoms. Okay, so one thing to use for, um, to promote the self-esteem, um, help staff bring toys to other children. It could be an example to promote self-esteem because they want to be moving up and around. So assist in that social skills by playing role-playing, small group play, modeling, negative learning, uh, learning opportunity, uh, learning opportunity, praise positive, so negative treated as a learning opportunity and praise positive behavior, help the child develop that ego strength, support groups at school and encourage child which areas they do excel. So try to um, promote that positive behavior. You wanna provide uh, emotional support, family support is essential and following routines. Um, parent education, you may wanna teach the child to keep organized, teach the child that they can keep a checklist or assignment and notebooks to help them organize more externally, maybe not as much in their head. Um, you may for these patients, because there's hyperactive in, in, impulsive and um, Hyperactive, impulsive, and intentive are some of the three criteria uh, types of manifestations of ADHD. So you want to develop, uh, teach them, uh, implement a behavioral management plan of psychotherapy, uh, psychotherapy. So developing coping skills, problem solving, conflict resolution, and improving that social skills with that patient. Maybe not interrupting conversations, for instance. Um, things to think about. Um, so you want to include the family as well. Minimize environment for distraction. Um, so you want a stable, a stable and uh, so uh, a stable and structured environment. So keep potentially harmful equipment out of reach. Limit um, and monitor screen time because they're already very stimulated. Um, provide a quiet, clutter-free area when they do need a study. Use shades to darken the room during naps or bedtime and minimize noise. Um, teach parents to minimize distraction when the child needs to concentrate. Distractions include TV, radios, or even other kids talking. They may have fear of missing out, so F-O-M-O. In school, you can um, help the child by having in the school, let them sit in the front and give them incentives for behaviors like good sticker, uh, like for being good, like stickers. Depends on what motivates the child. So when I was a child, I didn't like stickers. So maybe it was uh, candy or maybe it's um, pencils, like whatever the child's into. So make sure, um, you know, um, encourage physical activity for the young children, just keeping them energized. So if they are hyperactive, they have a way to get uh, get that energy going. Want to manage the safe environment. Don't let them just impulsively cross the street. So make them think, don't let them be impulsive or too hyperactive. Um, we want to talk about before we just talk about pharmacology um when the ho child is hospitalized they may need a place uh to place the child in a room with only one other person so they're not overstimulated um taking time uh, medication on time is uh, you want to praise the child for that if they do that praise the child in the hospital for lying still during a procedure um just praise the child like oh you did really good at sitting down in um, your chair for a very long time when i was doing an iv i'm really impressed um just like motivate the child and that will and you'll see um more out of the child all right so other things to consider is child um pharmacology um antipsychotics is really reserved for a really really aggressive children like lithium anticonvulsants and antidepressants but this is like really out there um we really want to focus on psych the psycho stimulants um and are we going to focus on three different kinds of psychostimulants? Um, methylphenidate. Um, I'm going to share this. Okay, so the psychostimulants that we're focusing on is ephetamines. Ephetamines um, include your bait. Your most common when you think of ephetamine is your Adderall. And your methylphenidate, um, Ritalin is an example, Concerta. Uh, and uh, um Atomoxetine. Atomoxetine is known as your stratera. So now I'm going to use the the medical terms. Okay. So when you want to think about these medications um, for ADHD, there's um, a lot in the textbook that I want to note out there that I highlighted a lot of the stuff that would really help everyone out. I think um, ephetamines are really cardiac they 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 what they're going to do is they're going to 
inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine um, for both of them. So there's going to be more norepinephrine epinephrine and dopamine available in the area. And it's also going to promote the release of norepinephrine and dopamine. So that's the mechanism of action of what it does. It's going to be a, it's considered a, it stimulates the cardiac stimulation and vasoconstriction should be mindful of that. So it is a CNS, uh, uh, CNS uh, uh, stimulant. All right, so stimulation uh, that is going to increase those respirations and suppress appetite and perception of pain. So just be aware of that, that these are other effects, uh, but we're trying to help with ADHD in this situation. Um, other adverse effects we're going to see is weight loss because they're having suppression of appetite, cardiovascular effects, um, psychosis in extreme cases. Um, and this is as a high potential for abuse and dependence. So be mindful of that. Um, what I have here in my notes is um, I'm going to just read it off and make sure that I bring to many notes. Therapeutic increases activity of the CNS neurons used for ADHD and narcolepsy, no longer used in, for obesity because they may have used it for obesity just to suppress appetite, but that's, I guess, not the reason they use it anymore. Um, it will, for adverse effects, it can cause nervousness, um, severe headache. If you want to think um, high blood pressure, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, decreased appetite, blurred vision. Why would you... Um, Suppressing the uh, parasympathetic system is always going to cause the blurred anticholinergic effect, blurred vision. Um, seizures, um, increased sympathetic system, insomnia, um, restlessness, and anxiety. So that makes sense because it is a stimulant. Um, contraindications is uh, you don't want to give this with really heart disease, high blood pressure, hyperthyroidism. They're already having metabolism going on crazy. Arteriosclerosis because that it, you don't want to raise everything up. So it's contraindicated and that makes sense. Um, food interactions, you want to avoid alcohol, um, caffeine. Caffeine will increase that stimulation and notify the provider if taking vitamins or herbal supplements. Just let the provider know everything else you're taking. Um, some nursing interventions to know about for when it comes to phenomines is for ADHD, um, you want to administer after breakfast and last daily dose is at, uh, dosed by 4 p.m. because it's going to keep that patient up. So you want to give it before breakfast because uh, you want to give it after breakfast because then you get let the patient eat. And if you let the patient eat, they're not going to ruin their appetite. appetite. So they're going to eat before they actually have it because it suppresses the appetite. And that's the, a problem associated with this drug. It's a pregnancy category C. Um, you do not crush or chew it. Um, teach patients to consult prescriber if if fatigue is persistent or current. Um, this drug has a high abuse risk and it enhances mood. And so they're classified as a sch schedule um, two drug. So this is a high abuse for a high uh, risk for abuse um, of phetamines, which is like we think of our Adderall as our main one. Um, a similar drug is called methylphenidate. It has very similar properties. It's literally just a different structure that actual consistent, like the actual chemical structure of the drug is a little bit different, but the actual actions of it is literally, it does the exact same thing. It does reuptakes, um, it inhibits reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine and promotes um, that being more available. So the action of it is, uh, I'm going to go real quickly over this. Uh, methylphenidate, we don't want to think of Ritalin or Concerta. Um, let's see, Ritalin, Concerta, um, those are our main kinds. Um, it, to, all right, I'm going to read off the notes of what isn't really important. The action is also seen as depressant, as I mentioned, um, FDA category C as well. It's treated for ADHD and narcolepsy, rapid elevation of mood, counteracts, opioid, um, induced sensation, um, so it does the opposite, enhances opioid induced sensation um, and rapid elevation of mood. So you're going to also have that euphoria. So it also would be a schedule two, I'm pretty sure. Um, you're going to have that dry mouth, nausea. Why are you going to have that? Because you're increasing the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system is going to go down. Abdominal pain, loss of appetite, weight loss, trouble sleeping because you're increasing that sympathetic system and that parasympathetic system is not as increased. All right, so you don't give this with MAOIs. That's really important. So methylphenidate for M, MAOI, no. Okay, within um, two weeks. So you want to wait that two weeks. It's the 14 days. Remember, 10 to 14 days, whenever there's a contraindication, you want to wait um, two weeks. Um, increase effects of TSAs, SSRIs, or uh, oral um, effects of TSAs. Um, also, SSRIs are, should not be given with this. So that's also an antidepressant. Oral 
anticonvulsants um, should not be given with this. Um, anticonvulsant would stop, would be the opposite. Uh, phenotonin, uh, phenotonin and alcohol should not be given with this, but you should never have alcohol with a lot of them. Um, initiate a low dose titrate up, um, the dose PO, it's oral for patients that are six through 12 years, five milligrams PO before breakfast again, lunch with, uh, lunch with gradual increments of five to 10 milligrams week, max 16 milligrams a day, 13 to 17 year olds, they have 13 milligrams a day PO. AM titrate to max 72 milligrams per day. Adult range is 10 to 60 milligrams per day. Extended releases doses may vary. So these are just um, doses to remember. We can't memorize them literally. Um, so also nursing interventions and patient education is really important. So ensure proper diagnosis and rule out a cardiac problem. If they have a cardiac problem, it's really dangerous to have a stimulant because this is a CNS stimulant, as I mentioned, just like a phenamine. Um, take baseline ECGs, um, stop treatment periodically to evaluate symptoms and children to let the body grow. So there is a, a concept called, uh, it's a concept called taking a break, so medication holidays. Uh, so uh, to let the butt take before 6 p.m. and prevent sleep disturbances, which makes sense. The other one was before 4 p.m. Um, do not crush or chew because it will be ex there's extended release. You want to monitor the blood pressure. Why? Because it increases blood pressure. Your CBCs, your urine analysis, analysis in diabetic patients, um, monitor blood glucose, um, norepinephrine, all things are going high. Um, stress can increase glucose. Monitor mental status. Monitor for undesirable effects. Patient education. Remember, uh, take medicine as directed. Um, drink at least eight ounces with the tablet, with this one. Avoid driving if experiencing blurred vision. Remember the blurred vision, you're decreasing the parasympathetic system. That's, uh, uh, that's a problem and may cause dizziness if that happens. If you forget to take the dose, take one as soon as possible. Before, um, take before 6 p.m. to avoid sleepiness. Um, you should not be taking this medication um, after 6 p.m. because it can keep you up. And avoid over-the-counter drugs and alcohol because you don't know how it's gonna interact with a stimulant. Um, a tocmexetine is, is known as Terra, is an MAO. So um, Stratera, I wanna talk about this one too, a lot. So these are the three kinds that I wanted to talk about mostly. All right, so it's a non-stimulant approved for ADHD. This is the only one that we are gonna, that we gave as examples in class. Um, so it's a selective inhibitor of neuro norepinephrine um, reuptake. So it has the kind of same concept, but this is the only one that's um, non-stimulant approved. And um, the stimulant abuse, uh, if there's a stimulant abuse concern, this is the other alternative, but it's not as effective as the psycho um, CNS stimulants. So a selective um, inhibitor of neuro norepinephrine epinephrine reuptake. Um, there is a risk of uh, things to think about. So like we know how it works, uh, pharmacokinetics. Uh, so our adverse reactions, we may see suicidal thinking. So you wanna be able to monitor uh, for this if they have suicidal thinking. Um, weight loss and growth delay. So nor do we know drug. So we don't know if drug uh, holidays would impact growth according to this, but drug holidays are something that has been practiced with this. Um, there could be causes of severe liver damage. It may raise or lower blood pressure, hypertension, and syncope has also been associated with this. It should not be given with an MAOI inhibitor. Um, and that's the main thing that was from the textbook. From my notes, it says norepinephrine accumulates at synapses, non-stimulant, and it's not controlled substance and less likely to be abused for children and adults to treat ADHD while increasing attention span and takes a few days to take effect. So things that you can see as adverse effects would be abdominal pain, constipation. Suicidal thoughts is the main thing that we worry about and hepatoxicity, so that liver, um, angioneurotic, um, edema, anaphylaxis, uh, um, but that's with all of them you should be concerned about. Decreased libido, um, decreased appetite, they all cause decreased appetite, weight loss, mood swings, Insomnia, urinary retention, why why urinary retention is we're decreasing that uh, rest and digest and we're increasing that sympathetic nervous system. Um, hypersensitivity is a 
would be contraindicated. Concurrent use of MAOIs at the same time can't do that. Angle closure glaucoma, we're already increasing that pressure. So if they have an uh, angle closure glaucoma, that's increasing the pressure, especially in the eye. Hypertension would be contraindicated. Suicidality in children would be contraindicated. This is the one that we worry about the most is suicidal thoughts. Um, so it would be contraindicated for this. Use in um, OB, um, but if it, if it benefits outweigh risk, so it all depends. Um, but it wouldn't be advised. Um, some things to think about is is nutrition less than body requirements. Um, is their appetite? That's what you want to watch for in these uh, ADHD children. Um, risk for social isolation, risk for suicide, um, impaired thought processes. These are things to think about for taking ADHD. Um, you want to monitor this one mainly for suicidal ideation to monitor their weight, height, and growth because um, this can delay growth and they may need to take drug holidays and monitor the height, growth, um, suicidal ideation again for Stratera S for S but it's also called, it's really, we, I go by atomoxetine. All right, so encourage snacks throughout the day because they may not be eating enough, so you're gonna have to encourage in other ways to slowly get them to encourage their high, higher calories. Um, smaller, more frequent meals. Uh, provide a quiet and lone stimulus room um, when they do study. So these are just um, things to think about when taking this. So um, that's, that's for ADHD. And I also wanted to mention some extra notes I have um says titrate over several weeks may take six weeks to respond i think that was just a generalized thing i have on my notes um teach to help take in the day to help elevate insomnia so this was like basic stuff that I, we talked about just now um stimulants help with attention and focus there's medication holidays um they need to take more of those medication holidays like two times a year i think is what it says um, periodic height, watch for growth, um, weight, and blood pressure because they may have a lot, um, not taking enough nutrition because they're not having that appetite like they should. Blood pressure is really important because it's stimulating um, your your nervous system, so that could be dangerous. Dratera is the most uh, the most thing to be cautious about is a risk for uh, with depression and having suicidal thoughts, and definitely watch and for that suppressing appetite, especially for those children. Um, provide high calorie breakfasts. Provide more frequent but smaller meals. Provide at after school. Um, psychostimulants, methylphenidate, um, and uh, like aphenamines, which is also, there's also other ones. There's like, right, Talon, Concerta is a methylphenidate. Um, dex, but dextrin is a aphenamine. So these are just saying psychostimulants in general. Um, you want to uh, do an electrocardiography on these patients, close member, Close, um, close monitoring with uh, cardiac arrhythmias or structural heart defect patients, especially because this can cause problems with um, cardiac problems that they have. Um, caution with tur Tourette's or tick-like behaviors. Um, they may need to be switching the medication to something not so um, potent. Um, and forms depends on the child's ability to swallow. So think about things like this. Um, that is everything for ADHD. Um, we talked about three different kinds of classifications and medications, just to remind you, aphenamines, methylphenidate and uh and um, uh, mox um the moxetine is not uh is not controlled substance but the other two are and they're highly um a problem with drug abuse so that's everything and happy studying